आई एम डॉक्टर आनंदा माने फैकल्टी ऑफ केमिस्ट्री डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बेसिक साइंस एंड ह्यूमैनिटीज कोल्हापुर इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजीज कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग कोल्हापुर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द डिसएडवांटेजेस ऑफ हार्ड वाटर इन स्टीम जनरेशन बॉयलर्स इन लेसन 6 ऑफ यूनिट 1 वाटर टेक्नोलॉजी now as we know for steam generation in boilers we are using feed water and if that feed water contain different type of impurities as we have seen in previous lectures the different impurities present in water are dissolved impurities dissolved anionic impurities which will produce cations and anions dissolved organic salt impurities and dissolved gases impurities Collateral impurities, suspended impurities, biological impurities, and fluidating impurities. If that boiler feed water contains such a type of impurities, these impurities lead to the different problems into the boiler. And these problems are nothing but number one is scale and sludge formation, caustic embrittlement, boiler feed water, and priming and forming. In this lecture, we will discuss about the two problems, one is scale and sludge formation and second is caustic embrittlement. Now, generally the scale and sludge formation is due to the dissolved salt impurities. That is in boiler, as we are providing water to produce steam, water evaporates continuously and concentration of dissolved salt impurities into the water increases progressively. That is when the concentration of dissolved salt impurities reach to a saturation point. That these dissolved salt impurities precipitate out into the boiler water and these impurities are thrown out of water in the form of precipitate onto the inner wall of the boiler material. Now, the nature of the precipitate will decide the type of a, that particular phenomenon. The scale is nothing but it is a hard deposit that is whereas a sludge is nothing but it is a loose and slimy precipitate that as we have seen in the uh, uh, diagram that this is a cross sectional view of the boiler and then whenever the dissolved salt impurities into the boiler filled water precipitate out these impurities if they are loose and slimy, they will float into the boiler water and that impurity is called as a sludge. And as these impurities uh, come out in the form of precipitate and which will firmly attach to the boiler inner surface or boiler inner wall, that is called as a uh, scale is there. That is, uh, that scale is nothing but it is a hard adhering coating onto the inner wall of the boiler material whereas sludge is nothing but it is a loose and slimy precipitate which floats into the boiler water that is called as a sludge. As the diagram indicates the, in the first diagram that this is the diagram of sludge formation which is loose and a slimy precipitate inside the boiler material whereas second diagram indicates the uh, scale that is a thick and adherent coating onto the inner wall of the boiler material different uh, dissolved salts impurities are responsible for a sludge and sl scale formation initially we will discuss about the sludge formation that is as sludge is a soft loose and slimy precipitate formed into the boiler material uh, that will float into the boiler water generally the sludge is formed by the substances which have a greater solubility in hot water than in cold water for example magnesium salts that is magnesium chloride magnesium sulfate magnesium carbonate and some of the calcium salts like calcium chloride generally a sludge is formed at a comparatively colder portion of the boiler and collects at the areas of the system where fluorite is generally low such as bends and joints because at these uh, uh, bends and joints the flow rate of water is low and uh, this is generally a comparatively colder portion and at that colder region these magnesium salts and calcium salts will precipitate out as they have a greater solubility in hot water and uh, less solubility in cold water and as they precipitate out 
they precipitate out in the form of loose and slimy precipitate which will float into the water that is called as a sludge. Now if we uh, talk about the disadvantages of sludge and uh, uh, prevention of sludge formation as we have seen that that is uh, a sludge is nothing but it is a loose and slimy precipitate uh, present on the inner wall of the boiler material and that sludge is a poor conductor of heat that is uh, uh, to maintain the steaming rate that is as water is present into the boiler material and we have to provide heat to produce steam from the boiler water and as sludge is depositing onto the inner wall of the boiler material or it is present into the uh, boiler water and as it is a bad conductor or poor conductor of heat to maintain the steaming rate to provide constant heat to the boiler water we have to provide extra fuel or extra heat to the boiler material as a sludge is a poor conductor of heat and therefore there is a some portion of heat is wasted here also a sludge precipitate settles in the regions of the poor water circulations such as pipe junctions plugs openings uh, thereby choking the pipes as uh, this pipe connection plug opening where poor water circulation is a colder portion and at that point sludge will form and therefore they will block the system or it will affect on the efficiency of the boiler material then how we can prevent the sludge formation generally sludge formation is due to the presence of dissolved impurities into the water that means before uh, feeding water to the boiler if we remove these dissolved impurities by means of well uh, defined uh, softening processes that is by using well softening water we can prevent the sludge formation also by means of frequently blow down operation means uh, sudden flow of water that sudden flow of water will remove the sludge precipitate uh, through the uh, flow of water because sludge is loose and slimy precipitate that is in this way we can prevent the sludge formation from boiler water which is generally uh, formed at a colder portion of the boiler after that we will discuss about the scale formation as uh, we have seen in the diagram that scale is generally uh, formed at the inner part of the boiler which is generally thick and strong adhering coating onto the inner wall of the boiler here. Now what are the causes of scale formation? Generally a scale is formed at higher temperature that is whenever a temperature of the boiler water is high scale formation is there and different uh, reasons are there for scale formation. First one is nothing but decomposition of calcium bicarbonate as we know uh, the bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium at higher temperature they undergoes decarb decomposition for example whenever calcium bicarbonate undergoes decomposition it will lead to the formation of calcium carbonate water and CO2 and that calcium carbonate is responsible for scale formation that calcium carbonate is soft and, and it is a main problem at low pressure boilers but in high pressure boilers it is soluble generally that is calcium carbonate is a problem of low pressure boilers and it is also responsible for the scale formation at higher temperature calcium carbonates reacts with water and it will lead to the formation of calcium hydroxide which is also insoluble at higher temperature which leads to the scale formation second cause is nothing but decomposition deposition of calcium sulfate as we know a calcium sulfate is soluble in cold water but comparatively insoluble in superheated water therefore if boiler feed water contains even a small amount of calcium sulfate it get precipitate as hard scale on the heated portion of the boiler and that scale uh, will coat hardly hard inherent bond will form between calcium sulfate and inner wall of the boiler and that is leading to scale formation next reason is nothing but hydrolysis of magnesium salts that is generally number of magnesium salts are present in boiler feed water these magnesium salts are they undergo hydrolysis at higher temperature and due to hydrolysis of magnesium salts at higher temperature magnesium hydroxide is forming and that magnesium hydroxide has a partial solubility into water at higher temperature which will precipitate out and it will again deposit onto the inner wall of the boiler as a strong deposit adherent coating that is a scale is there also 
even a very small amount of silica is present in boiler water that is also leading to the scale formation because we know that silica reacts with calcium salts then calcium silicate or magnesium silicate if silica reacts with magnesium salts then magnesium silicate forms here and that calcium silicate or magnesium silicate it will deposit firmly it will stick very firmly on the inner side of the boiler surface and it is very difficult to remove that is also lead to the scale formation means that is uh, scale formation is due to different phenomena. that is it may be decomposition of uh, calcium bicarbonate or magnesium bicarbonate it may be due to the deposition of calcium sulfate it may be due to the hydrolysis of magnesium salts and even it may be due to the presence of silica in boiler feed water that means whenever we are using water for steam generation before feeding water to boiler we have to do some pretreatment onto the uh, water here that means we have to remove these dissolved impurities in order to avoid the scale formation now if we discuss about the disadvantage of scale formation also as like sludge scale is also a poor conductor of heat that scales have low thermal conductivity so the rate of heat transfer from the boiler to inside water is decreased which results in increase in fuel consumption that means to maintain the steaming rate inside the boiler water we have to provide extra amount of heat to the boiler material to maintain the steaming rate as boiler material from inside it is coated with the scale and that uh, uh, whatever heat we are providing to the boiler material it will not pass efficiently to the water and therefore to maintain steaming rate we have to provide here extra amount of heat and that will lead to the wastage of fuel that table will indicates that relationship between thickness of scale and wastage of fuel in percentage that means if the thickness of scale is 0 0.325 millimeter there is a 10 percent wastage of fuel we have to provide 10 percent extra fuel to maintain the steaming rate if the thickness of scale is 0 0.625 millimeter there is a wastage of 15 percent of fuel if the west thickness of scale is 1.25 millimeter there is a 15 percent wastage of fuel and again if you observe if there is a thickness of scale is 2.5 millimeter there is a wastage of fuel 80 percent likewise if there is a thickness of scale is even 12 millimeter the wastage of fuel is 150 percent that means we can imagine that is how that scale will decrease the efficiency of the boiler second disadvantage is nothing but lowering of boiler safety as we know the boiler material is generally iron material that is as a boiler from inside if it is coated by a scale which is a bad conductor of heat and to maintain the steaming rate of water we have to provide an extra heat to the boiler material that is uh, overheating of boiler is to be done which makes boiler material softer and weaker this causes distortion, distortion of boiler tube and makes the boiler unsafe to bear the pressure inside the tube that is as a boiler material due to extra heating or overheating it get weakens that it cannot bear the pressure inside the uh, boiler pressure of the steam that is what we can say lowering of boiler safety third disadvantage is nothing but decrease in efficiency as we know scale deposit into the walls and condensers of the boilers and choke them partially which result in decrease in efficiency of boilers that is uh, particles of scale may deposit into the cracks or walls of condensers and efficiency of boiler decreases likewise due to uneven expansion leads to a cracking of thick scale that is as we are providing here extra amount of fuel to maintain the steaming rate that uneven expansion of boiler water leads to a, a cracking of the thick scale and even uh, a small crack is there and if water comes into that crack overheated pipes are there and this results in formation of large amount of steam which may cause explosion in boiler that is there may be a danger of explosion also then how we can prevent the scale formation as we know the scale is due to the substances which are uh, uh, insoluble at higher temperature that we have to remove the scale that is prevention of scale formation the first with the help of scrapper or wire brush generally in low pressure boilers just like uh, uh, calcium carbonate is a problem in low pressure boilers if with the help of scrapper or wire brush we can remove the deposition of calcium carbonate 
again by using thermal shocks that is by heating the boiler and suddenly cooling with cold water that whatever adhered coating on the inner wall of the boiler that may uh, dispatch from the surface of the inner surface of the boiler material and then we can remove the scale formation also by adding uh, some chemicals to dissolve the uh, deposited scale for example suppose calcium carbonate and if we add uh, hydrochloric acid calcium carbonate get dissolved in hydrochloric acid and we can remove the calcium carbonate then by means of simple blow down operation likewise calcium sulfate which has a, a low solubility at higher temperature and which is a major problem for scale formation if we add ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid that is edta which is a chelating agent that edta will make a complex with a calcium which is water soluble and then by means of simple blow down operations we can remove the calcium sulfate present in water that is we can minimize the scale formation due to calcium sulfate that is uh, scale is due to generally the salts which are uh, insoluble at higher temperature the scale is a major problem in high temperature boilers as well as high pressure boilers are there after the scale and sludge formation we'll discuss about the next uh, disadvantage due to the use of hard water or impure water into the uh, boiler that next is nothing but caustic embrittlement really caustic embrittlement is nothing but the it is the phenomenon which the boiler of material becomes brittle that is soft due to accumulation of caustic substances that is caustic embrittlement that means due to caustic substances the strength of the boiler material decreases that is as we know during a, a softening of water by means of soda lime process we are using sodium carbonate and uh, we know that that sodium carbonate is undergoing hydrolysis at higher temperature that is if a boiler feed water if it contains even a small amount of sodium carbonate that at higher temperature sodium carbonate undergoes hydrolysis which will lead to the formation of sodium hydroxide this sodium hydroxide which is a caustic alkali we can say that it is responsible for caustic embrittlement that means inside the boiler if sodium carbonate is there sodium carbonate will undergo hydrolysis at higher temperature which leads to the formation of sodium hydroxide as a caustic alkali and then if that boiler feed water containing that sodium hydroxide alkali if it comes in contact with boiler material that alkali that is sodium hydroxide it will attack onto the surrounding metal and forms the iron oxide and hydrogen that is boiler material whenever it comes in contact with NaOH it will undergo rusting and there is a formation of a rust along with the elimination of a hydrogen that means there is a loss of iron metal from the boiler material and then a strength of the boiler material decreases now such a type of corrosion of boiler parts that is particularly at stressed parts like bends joints etc due to a chemical attack of caustic soda is called as caustic embrittlement because at this stressed part the NaOH accumulation is higher now that caustic embrittlement can be explained by considering following concentration cell that is iron at bends and joints where the flow rate of water is low and this NaOH can accumulate therefore that iron at bends and joints it is in contact with the concentrated NaOH where flow rate of water is low and that part will act as anode whereas the remaining part of the iron where flow rate of water is high and is in contact with uh, boiler water with diluted NaOH that part will act as a cathode now if you observe the diagram such a type of cracks will form into the boiler material due to caustic embrittlement then if we think about the prevention of caustic embrittlement which is generally uh, due to the uh, formation of caustic into the boiler water due to hydrolysis of sodium carbonate at higher temperature that how we can prevent it the first one is nothing but by adding sodium phosphate as a softening agent instead of sodium carbonate in soda lime process for water purification that is if we use sodium carbonate it will lead to the formation of sodium hydroxide and if we replace sodium carbonate by means of sodium phosphate 
which will not form sodium hydroxide and as there is no formation of sodium hydroxide no formation of concentration cell or galvanic, galvanic cell and caustic embrittlement stops likewise by adding lignins and tannins to boiler water which helps in blocking hair cracks that is as an average accumulation takes place into the small cracks of the boiler material if we block these cracks by means of addition of lignin and tannin NaOH accumulation not happen no galvanic or concentration cell form and we can prevent caustic embrittlement also by adding sodium phosphate to boiler water which prevents infiltration of caustic soda solution in cracks by blocking cracks likewise again we can block the cracks of the boiler material by adding sodium sulfate likewise lignins and tannins in this way we can prevent the caustic embrittlement this caustic embrittlement is generally due to the use of sodium carbonate in soda lime process that sodium carbonate will undergo hydrolysis at higher temperature leading to the formation of sodium hydroxide that sodium hydroxide leads to the formation of a concentration cell over the iron surface the parts of the iron which are under stress just like bends joints where water circulation is low flow of water is low that NaOH accumulates and this part will act as anode and the remaining part of the iron will act as cathode and which leads to the caustic embrittlement thank you